Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here from Pop Turnus, speaking to Brianne Chu about Gone in the Night. It's a very good thriller that's out now. Welcome to the show. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me. <laughs> it's pretty cool. I feel like you could make an argument that you're enjoying working in the horror thriller genre, you would say, these days, right? <laughs> I 100%, 100% am enjoying working in this genre. Um, it's, such a, it's such a great community mm-hmm. surrounding it, full of passionate fans and creatives, and um, I think it's really fun. I think it's a very effective storytelling tool. Yes. And as an actor, I love the thrill and the challenge of it. You know, you look at this film, and I don't think we can, like, say it's, like, a, it's, it's it's a thriller, you know? It's got the horror components and everything. But I'm just curious, because you know this, like, from a lot of your other projects. The horror fans, they eat it all up. They eat up the thriller. They eat up the sci-fi. They love it all type thing, right? Mm-hmm. Is it exciting mm-hmm. going into a project where it is a thriller, but it has enough of those kind of horror elements that you can capture, like... A big audience and you know that the there's a good chance the horror fans are really going to eat up gone in the night do you think about that a little bit it's interesting that you say that because i don't think it ever crossed my mind that i was trying to garner as many um audiences as yeah. possible i figured that this movie is what i really love about this movie is that it is very specific and the choices made are very specific and that you know it was probably going to be like a a certain group of people type of person that would enjoy this film and that was fine with me because at the end of the day we were being true to the story and our creative vision and um but you know if it does happen to garner more attention from horror fans uh because of the nature of the film how genre bending it is then great because it's it's just such an enjoyable film and i think you know I think a, a lot of people will have the opportunity to enjoy it if they give it a shot absolutely it's so funny you mentioned the genre bending because I, I'm curious what you think about this. Do you feel like genre bending? Like, I feel like these days, like films that came on the last couple of years, I feel like genre bending is like a trend now. You know how like hot sauce was a big trend and everything? I feel like <laughs> I feel like everyone wants to make genre bending movies. But I feel like you look back at movies that came out, you know, early 2000s and everything. I don't feel like the I don't feel like the creators woke up and were like, I want to make a horror comedy thriller fr- thriller movie. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like yeah. it just, like, do you feel like it's premeditated? Do you feel like it just happens? Like, what do you think about genre bending? I think it's a little bit of both. Look, yeah. I think that the, I feel like the market is so oversaturated with content. Mm-hmm. And of course, people want to stand out. But with that being said, I think that Eli is, and Matthew Derby, who also wrote it alongside him, I think their intentions were much more pure. I think mm-hmm. it was just, he's, if you look back at Eli's other work, it's it's all very interesting. It's all very psychological. Uh-huh. And it's, you can't exactly pinpoint what, what it is you're watching. You just know you like it, you know? And that is the nature of the way his brain works and, and his writing. And I think that he was just like being true to like the story that he's written. And I think as a, product it just can be considered genre bending but i get it because like you know i just watch everything everywhere all the time and it blew my mind it's like maybe one of my favorite films ever so and um but you know to like really pinpoint that as one genre i think is pretty tough so um i don't know i don't feel like like you have to slap a, a single genre or category on a film in order for it to be deemed valid or worthy or whatever i think it's fun to mix it up a bit you know i mean you've done don't get me wrong you've done those projects where you know what it is right like, oh, 100%. You, like you know like what 47 meters on cage it is you know what oh I mean? yeah <laughs> and i love that no, movie one, by the way i just want to say i no, love that movie <laughs> <laughs> no, I, absolutely, absolutely, and you know what? And that's that's great too. That's the thing. It's the, the, that's the thing with the artistry that you know of of film and television is that it can be so many things, and it can be nothing at all, and it can you know it's and it's also very much up for interpretation. And it's I think that this art, you know, I try not to take it too seriously. Sometimes I do. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> you try not. I try not to take it too seriously because it's. It's art, you yeah. know, it's all subjective. It's interesting too, because you look at this film and you know, I 
I like this one's really good if you're going fresh. So I'm really kind of like mm. when I talk about it, it's hard. You know what I you mean? You know, you gotta like tiptoe. Yeah, because I, I honestly like I'm recommending to everyone, and they're doing it, and they agree with me. Like, watch the trailer and then just go into it. Don't read it. Do, don't read about it. Like, I think that's the best way to do it. To be honest with you. So if we're talking based on what the trailer says, I can kind of talk about it because the trailer is out there. It's not really spoiling. Yeah, of course. But I mean, you know. Getting back to the whole suspenseful thriller component of it, Brianne, I find it interesting because people are scary. People are kind of strange. Pe like, it's not just, you're not relying on, like, the jump scares and, like, yeah. the gore mm -hmm. all the time to scare mm -hmm. people or add suspense and everything. So in terms of these characters, these complex characters that it can kind of be, you know, seem like they're a bit strange or you know mm -hmm. it's it's been suspenseful what's that like playing those characters being in that situation where like people are scary you know what i mean it's not just relying on the traditional horror tropes what's that like yeah you? yeah that's kind of really why i love it because you know i obviously i've done it a lot of like the the kitschier um horror which i love mm -hmm. the the more the gory stuff and this one it's funny how how it is so suspenseful and scary and thrilling without those aspects. Like you're saying, it's not in your face about it, but it's true. There's an unsettling feeling you have mm -hmm. from the beginning of watching this movie. And I think that that's a, the culmination of, you know, the writing choices, the cinematography choices, the music choices, the acting choices. And that was the intention. It, you should kind of always feel like there's something wrong. And then as soon as you think that, oh, I think I know what's going on. You don't. And I think a lot of what humans find to be scary is the unknown. Yeah. And that's exactly what we're giving you. And it, it feels like like insignificant and small, right? Like that's how we're going to scare you. No, it's, it's major. And also we, we're all dealing with this kind of existential crisis of like our mortality and hanging on to our youth and, you know, not dying alone, whatever it may be. And so we're playing with that, something yep. that everyone can relate to to an extent yeah absolutely and i'm gonna say you know the cast of this film i mean this is like a 15 out of 10 cast like this cast is <laughs> so good you know what i mean yeah we're breaking the <laughs> scale great. 10 on 10 is not enough. I mean, well like you're working with nona you're working with dermot you're working with john you're working with owen and what's i yeah. find really cool about your character again it's not it's not really a spoiler but like your character has interactions with a lot of those characters, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you got to really, like, some of the characters, not as much, right? Like, they pass by and everything. But you really got to work with, like, everyone I just mentioned on this film. So what was yeah. that like working with this amazing cast? I mean, I feel so fortunate that, you know, I didn't just, like, come in and, like, just do my stuff and leave. I felt like I felt like I was a part of it deeply like deeply intertwined and collaborating with everyone involved which was so satisfying and so great um but yeah Greta is she's an interesting character you know <laughs> she I think she's someone that people will underestimate mm -hmm. um but she very much is orchestrating a lot more than you realize and um yeah she I don't want to give anything away I know she has, like, she, she's yeah. she's complex we'll just leave it. Well, you complex. Know, I feel like the coolest thing too is I taught like I started this interview talking about how like you're not a stranger to like the thriller horror genre, right? Neither mm -hmm. of the cast is, if you think about it. No, it's true. <laughs> yeah, it's so true. We've all we've all had our fair share of horror and thriller, and I I I, I didn't even realize it until you said it now. But maybe that really lended to our experience doing it because it just felt like we were also just very much on the same page yeah. and like the vibe and the under we had this just mutual understanding for one another and i mean maybe that was all orchestrated by eli who knows well, it's pretty crazy but, I mean, I mean, you look at yourself you know i mentioned 47 meters um on cage you know on human which recently came out you had that amazing film as well you, um owen was in a movie called i see you which is so yeah. good You're of that and thriller. It. he was yeah, in the and it. It as, as well yeah, went on a rider like stranger things even even mm -hmm. go back Dermot's filming Scream 6 right now. John Gallagher mm -hmm. did Hush. Like it's, I it's love like Hush. I really love Hush. Um, yeah, no, that's like one of the biggest things I, I fangirled about with John was Short Term 12 and Hush. And mm -hmm. yeah, it's so true. We all have, you know, a very deep history with the genre. And um, yeah, I don't know. I guess we're all just very comfortable in it. But it's a fun genre and I, I, I get it. I really love doing it. I, love really, I really love watching it. And I feel like when it's done right, 
oh, it's so satisfying. Is it sometimes overwhelming, though, how big it is, though, right now? Like, getting to the other side of it, you know what I mean? Like, some of the horror movies coming out right now are some of the biggest movies on the, like, out there right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it wasn't always the case, you know what I mean? Yeah, I think that, you know, as a society, like, the content that we're most attracted to, I feel like it's ever-changing. It's, like, it's just trending, you know, and right now seems to be the moment for horror and, and thriller. And honestly, I love it. I think it's it's a form of escapism that we could all kind of use, especially with the horror show we're living in called This Country. Yes. <laughs> um, so, you know what I mean? It's just like it's almost like. Goes back to what I said, though. People are scary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people are scary, and I think what we want when we want an escape, we're looking for something worse than what we're living in, and so I don't blame people for watching it. I watch it too. So you're yeah, so yeah, like I said, you're a big, you're a fan of the genre as well, right? Not only working in mm-hmm. it, like you watch them. So do you know what your favorite horror movie is, and what the scariest horror movie you've ever seen is? Like, though, do you have an answer for both those? Because those are two different movies, if you think about it. Yeah, that's so true. For favorite, I don't even know if I have my favorite. I have like a couple. For scariest, I know, but, like, it's hard for me. Like, they're two different things. Hereditary really messed me up. (laughs) Okay, so that might be... That really messed me up. That was the scariest, I think, for For, me. For me, it was The Strangers with Liv Tyler and Scott Speedman. (gasps) Oh, yeah! I just feel like just the the obvious kind of middle of nowhere people with masks trying yeah, to kill totally. you in a cab. Oh, totally. <laughs> no, I really, I don't know what it was about hereditary. It really messed me up. Um, and then also I really, I've always loved like psychological thrillers, mm-hmm. right? So like shutter Island, yes. um, uh, the others with Nicole Kidman. The I really so good. Uh, yeah, so I've always loved stuff like that as well, but um, but yeah, I have to say Hereditary and also Midsommar, like, yeah. I mean, Ari Aster is a beast, like, he really knows how to make people, and that's the thing, it's, it's like, yeah, of course there are, like, gory, jump scare aspects to it, but he doesn't rely on those things, it's the people that are... The scary. end of Hereditary, we're not going to go into what it is, but, like, that sequence is, like... It's it's ter- like just the voices and just hearing everything happening is just terrifying. <laughs> it's really terrifying. I also love the Conjuring series. I think it's, it's really funny great. how I- you mention it too. Like forty, like I, forty-seven meters on cage. You know, that's also one of my favorite things about that movie is the cat. Like you, you're all so good in it. You know what I mean? That, uh, that that's one of those things. Like Sophie, Nel- Sophie Nelis, like everyone's just so yeah. good in that movie. That one has some like. Like, in terms of shark movies, that one has some, like, pretty... Like, th- those are some good jump scares in that yeah, movie. Yeah, no, I have to say, yeah, I'm proud of that movie. And, like, we all worked really hard. We spent most of the time underwater. <laughs> yeah. Like, actually underwater. So, you know, we really wanted to push the limits of, like, what that uh, shark movie is considered or what it could be. And Johannes Roberts, who um, directed it, he's just great. And he's so fun and... Yeah, I mean, I always like to just try something, of course, like, (laughs) what is really original nowadays, right? But I think turning things on its head, pushing the limits of it, just experimenting is always fun. And I love to work with uh, creatives that are willing to do that. Oh, absolutely. And Unhuman was really good. Shout out to Drew Scheid, friend of the show as well. I love (laughs) Drew! That's my boy. So good. No, absolutely. Um, Rhea, thank you so much for coming on Pop Turtle to chat about God in the Night. It was so great catching up. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, so like they're going to be able to check out the film. And you have an Instagram account, right, that people could keep up to date with if they wanted to? Yeah, it's just um, my name, Brianne Chu. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> well, this has been Pop Turn at YouTube.com slash Pop Turn for previous episodes. Until not next time, this is Brianne Chu, who you can catch in God in the Night. And PD Beats, signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.